name is Dr. Michelle Kajana, and I'm the project director for the New York Mid-Atlantic Consortium for Genetic and Newborn Screening Services, also known as NIMAC. I appreciate you taking the time to view this video. It is important to use proper procedures for blood collection to ensure specimens from babies in your care are submitted to your state's newborn screening program in a timely manner. Following proper procedures for collecting blood spot specimens is a very important first step in guaranteeing that every infant is screened on time. This short video details the step-by-step -step process. Before we get started, here are seven important points to remember about newborn screening. The blood is used to screen for many disorders. Most babies with these disorders appear healthy at birth. However, serious symptoms can develop. This is why these blood tests are so important. Early detection and intervention can significantly reduce the impact of these disorders. Complete and accurate recording of demographic information on the order or blood collection form is extremely important. This information is needed to contact the physician caring for the baby who screens positive. Collect the specimen at the appropriate time recommended by your state, ideally when the baby is between 24 and 48 hours of age. Do not put too much or too little blood in each circle. Specimens should be submitted every day to the laboratory using the courier service recommended in your state. Do not wait for more specimens to accumulate to ship them. Newborn screening is very important for infants and their families. Newborn screening is a very successful public health program and has helped babies grow up to live healthy, productive lives. Did you know that approximately one in 300 newborns have a genetic condition detectable through newborn screening? Each year, 12,000 babies in the United States with serious but treatable conditions grow up healthier thanks to newborn screening. With early diagnosis and treatment, Clinicians can successfully manage specific conditions and save lives. In some cases, changes to an infant's diet can prevent intellectual disability or other medical complications such as seizures or blindness. Congenital hypothyroidism, a condition on the screening panel, is treated with thyroid hormone replacement therapy, which prevents lifelong cognitive impairment. Screening for congenital hypothyroidism avoids about $200 million per year in costs related to 160 avoided cases of intellectual disability. Early identification and treatment of phenylketonuria, more commonly known as PKU, prevents lifelong cognitive impairment. Severe combined immunodeficiency, also known as SCID, is a treatable illness in which an infant fails to develop a normal immune system. If undetected and untreated, skid typically leads to death before the baby's first birthday. Early diagnosis can lead to a cure. One model estimates that each dollar invested in skid screening saves $5 in healthcare costs. Newborn screening is performed on dried blood specimens collected by heel stick. Drops of blood from the baby's heel are used to saturate the marked circles on the specimen collection form. The specimen collection forms are called different names, such as the Guthrie card, the filter paper card, or the blood collection form or device. It should never be called the PKU form, the PKU slip, or a PKU device. Newborn screening includes many disorders besides PKU. This segment describes the importance of collecting and sending the cards in a timely manner to avoid delays in getting results to healthcare providers and potentially life-altering treatment to infants. Inappropriate collection, inadequate demographic information, and poor collection of blood specimens all contribute to delays in notification of abnormal results. The American College of Medical Genetics and the Clinical Laboratory Standards Institute recommend that specimens be collected after the newborn is at least 24 hours old. A specimen collected before 24 hours of age can be used to screen for some of the disorders on the recommended uniform screening panel, but it is not reliable for several disorders. Studies of screening results indicate that a specimen taken on the second day of life is suitable for all testing, with a slightly increased risk of not detecting certain abnormal conditions. Never discharge an infant without collecting a specimen. Any delays in specimen collection will greatly increase the risk of not identifying an infant who has one of the screened conditions. The specimen should be collected after the baby is 24 hours old. 
Newborns discharged at less than 24 hours of age must have a specimen collected at discharge and a second specimen collected when the baby is between 24 hours and 120 hours of age, that is, day two through day five of life. Some states require routine collection of a second specimen. Check with your state's newborn screening program regarding their specific requirements. If the baby is in the neonatal intensive care unit, otherwise sick or of low birth weight, the timing of specimen collection is different. If you're collecting a specimen from a newborn in the NICU, please check your state's guidelines and your hospital's policies for the timing of collection. Make sure all demographic information is accurate, complete, and legible on the blood collection card or on the remote entry screen. Providing the name of the baby's correct primary care provider and the mother's address and phone number are essential for locating the baby if the screen is abnormal. Never provide the name of a hospital physician who will not be seeing the baby after discharge as the primary care physician. Ask the mother for the name and address of her baby's doctor. In addition, certain demographic information, for example, age at time of collection and birth weight, are used to determine whether the results are normal or abnormal. While completing the information on the card, make sure not to contaminate the filter paper circles by letting the circles come in contact with anything other than the infant's blood. Do not touch the filter paper section of the card before or after blood collection. Also, be sure you keep the submitter copy in the infant's medical record. The materials needed to conduct successful blood collection are a sterile lancet with a tip that is less than two millimeters, a sterile alcohol pad, sterile gauze pads, a warm moist towel or other warming device per your facility's protocol, current blood collection form, and gloves. Step one, verify that the demographic section of the blood collection card is filled out completely and verify the identity of the baby by reviewing the name, date of birth, and medical record number per your hospital's policy. Add a special note, e.g. adoption, identification of a disorder prenatally, meconium ileus, sibling with a disorder, on the panel, if appropriate. Step two, make sure you inform parents about the purpose and need for newborn screening using your state's newborn screening educational brochure. Take the opportunity to answer any questions they may have. Step three, Place the infant's leg in a position that will increase venous pressure with the heart above the feet. Step four, warm the baby's heel to increase blood supply to the area by covering the puncture site for three to five minutes with a warm, moist towel at a temperature of not more than 42 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not use a hot compress. If utilizing a warming device, such as a chemically activated heel warmer, use per device instructions. Step five, Wash and dry your hands. Put on gloves. Cleanse the puncture site on the baby's heel with a sterile alcohol pad. Wipe dry with a sterile gauze pad. Make sure there is no residual alcohol on the baby's heel. This may cause hemolysis of the blood specimen, resulting in an invalid specimen. The cross-hatched area is the safe area on the newborn's heel to puncture when collecting a blood specimen. Step six. With a lancet or other approved incision device appropriate for the newborn's age, considering whether the infant is preterm versus full term, puncture the heel skin with one continuous deliberate motion at a slight angle, a little less than 90 degrees. Wipe away the first drop of blood with a dry sterile gauze pad as it is likely to contain tissue fluids that will contaminate the specimen. Step seven, wait for a large drop of blood to form. Step eight, lightly touch the filter paper to this large drop of blood. Make sure the blood completely fills the circle and soaks through the filter paper. To enhance blood flow, apply very gentle pressure to the area surrounding the puncture site. Make sure that you do not milk the area surrounding the puncture site. Milking causes tissue fluids to mix with the blood, resulting in an invalid specimen. While either side of the filter paper may be chosen for this procedure, only apply the blood to one side of the filter paper. Step nine, fill in the remaining circles using the same method as in steps seven and eight. If blood flow stops, repeat steps three through seven using another site. After specimen collection is complete, follow your institution's protocol when caring for the puncture site. Step 10, dry the blood spot specimen at room temperature on a clean, flat, non-absorbent surface away from a window or other direct heat source for a minimum of three to four hours. Check with your state's screening program for further recommendations on drying. Step 11, 
Be sure to send the completed blood collection form to your state's testing laboratory within 24 hours of collection using the recommended courier service. To help ensure you collect a valid specimen, please note the heel stick is the preferred mode of collection for newborn screening whenever possible. Collection of specimens and capillary tubes is not recommended. EDTA or other anticoagulants should never be used for newborn screening specimen collection as they will invalidate screening results and may cause false negative or false positive results. Touching the area containing the circles on the filter paper with gloved or ungloved hands before or after blood collection may result in contamination of the specimen. Feeding formulas, antiseptic solutions, water, lotions, Vaseline or powder on the collector's hand or the newborn's heel can also contaminate the specimen. To collect quality specimens and avoid delays in receipt of results, follow these procedures. Check the expiration date on the filter paper. A specimen collected on expired filter paper can be unsuitable for testing. Collect blood for newborn screening when the infant is at least 24 hours of age. Some states have a requirement that infants be fed for at least 24 hours prior to screening. Check with your state's screening program for any additional requirements. Complete all of the required patient information on the collection card, filter paper, using a ballpoint pen. Write legibly and pay special attention to dates and times of birth, first feeding and collection, birth weight, primary care provider, mother's address, gestational age, if required, and transfusion status. Collect blood from the most medial or lateral portion of the planter surface of the heel. Allow blood to soak through to completely fill each of the pre-printed circles. Do not apply layers of successive blood drops to the same printed circle. Inspect both sides of the collection card, filter paper, to be sure blood is soaked through to the back of the card. Allow the blood specimen to air dry for a minimum of three hours on a level, non-absorbent, open surface at room temperature. Do not refrigerate the specimen. Make sure the protective flap does not touch the blood spots while they are drying. If your screening laboratory blood collection card does not have a protective flap, rotate the collection card 180 degrees from the cards on the stack immediately above and below so the blood spots do not come in contact with each other during transport. The collection card with its dried blood specimen should be transported to your state's laboratory within 24 hours after specimen collection using the preferred transport method. Send specimens every day. Do not batch them as this will lead to a delay in receiving results and may lead to specimens deemed too old to test upon receipt. Maintain appropriate tracking documentation at your hospital or practice and record pickup and delivery at the laboratory. Be sure to include the list of specimens in the package if required by your state and maintain a copy to help track specimens lost in transit. The perfect specimen has all information recorded clearly on the blood collection form, is collected from a baby who is greater than 24 hours of age, and, if required, has fed for more than 24 hours, is not contaminated by foreign substances, has all the printed circles completely filled with blood that has been applied evenly on one side of the filter paper and is free of layering and clots is dried for at least three hours on a flat, non-absorbent surface away from direct heat and sunlight, is transported within 24 hours of collection to your state's testing laboratory. State newborn screening laboratories receive many blood specimens that are unacceptable, invalid, or unsuitable for testing. This delays the screening of the newborn because it requires a submitter to locate the infant and repeat the collection procedure to submit a subsequent specimen. The testing laboratory classifies unsuitable specimens into several categories based on the following criteria. Quantity of blood is insufficient. A QNS specimen is due to filter paper circles that are not completely filled or not saturated. Blood spots appear scratched. In this case, the blood is applied using a capillary tube or by other device. Blood spots are wet or discolored. This happens when the specimens are not properly dried before mailing. Blood spots appear supersaturated. Supersaturated specimens occur when the blood is applied with a capillary tube or needle or when blood is applied to both sides of filter paper circles. Blood spots appear diluted. 
This happens when the puncture site is squeezed or milked to expel blood. This can also occur when blood spots are exposed to direct heat or when the filter paper is contaminated before or after blood collection by gloved or ungloved hands or by substances such as alcohol, feeding formulas, antiseptic solutions, hand lotion, Vaseline, or powder. Blood spots exhibit serum rings. Serum rings occur when the alcohol is not wiped off the site before the skin is punctured and the filter paper comes in contact with the alcohol. Water, hand lotion, Vaseline, or other substances that come in contact with the filter paper can cause serum rings. Serum rings also occur when the area around the puncture site is squeezed or milked, when the specimen is dried improperly, or when the blood is applied to filter paper with a capillary tube. Blood spots appear clotted or layered. This occurs when successive blood drops are touched to the same filter paper circle several times, or when the circles are filled from both sides of the filter paper. Specimens are delivered to the state laboratory more than an acceptable number of days after collection. Specimens held at the hospital before mailing, called bundling, may arrive too late for testing, or delivery may be delayed during transport. Blood collection card expired. This occurs when the sample is collected on an out-of-date blood collection card. In order to effectively reduce the chance of disability, morbidity, and mortality, babies with disorders on the newborn screening panel benefit most when they are identified before the onset of symptoms. Some newborn screening conditions could express acute symptoms in the first days of life. The following are examples of such time-critical conditions. Organic acid disorders, fatty acid oxidation disorders, amino acid disorders, classic galactosemia, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Call and alert the testing laboratory or note on the collection form if there's information about a disorder on your state's screening panel, such as a known family history, a prenatal test result in the baby or the mother's record, for example, cystic fibrosis carrier screening and subsequent prenatal test results and or early clinical symptoms for any of disorders, for example, meconium ileus. Newborn screening tests are intended to provide an early opportunity to detect disorders before symptoms appear. However, these tests are not diagnostic. Regardless of screening test results, physicians should immediately evaluate any infant who shows findings consistent with the targeted disorders. Additional testing is needed to determine whether the newborn has the disorder. The federal recommendations for timeliness in newborn screening are as follows. Presumptive positive or referral level results for time critical conditions should immediately be reported to the child's health care provider at no later than five days of life. All presumptive positive referral level results for time sensitive conditions should be reported to the health care provider as soon as possible but no later than seven days of life. All newborn screening results should be reported within seven days of life. Everyone involved in newborn screening wants to do the best job possible. Hospitals should have policies governing the collection and transport of screening specimens. Hospitals should also have policies to ensure results have been received for all specimens sent to the program. Some hospitals have a screening QA committee dedicated to reviewing policies and procedures related to the collection and transport of newborn screening specimens. Together, we can meet these recommendations and help save lives. You can help by ensuring that the initial specimen is collected in the appropriate time frame for the baby's condition, but no later than 48 hours after birth, and transported to your state's laboratory as soon as possible, ideally within 24 hours of collection. On behalf of NIMAC, thank you again for taking the opportunity to watch this video. You can learn more at the website on your screen.